Good morning and welcome into this space. I am glad that you have joined us this morning. I hope that every one of you is well, slept well last night and uh, are ready to get started with this day as we usually do. Let us just prepare ourselves for prayer and we do that by becoming more attentive of the presence of Jesus Christ with us. So let's just take a deep breath, live out slowly, just like that. And then we're just going to take and close our eyes for a second and know that there is a reality around us that is the presence of Jesus. Presence in the Spirit, a presence that he told us would be there that he would be with us till the end of the age. And Jesus said to us, wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he certainly would be there. And yes, we are, we are gathered this morning. So we're here, we're just sort of trying to bring ourselves together. I'm glad to see everyone this morning. Janice, I'm glad you're here. Khan, I'm glad that you're here. And all the others that are gathering with us this morning, and I give thanks for you. Why don't we get started with prayer? Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize. Allergies. They'll get you every time. Okay, our reading this morning comes, first reading comes from Psalm 20. So let us listen to these words. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send your, you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with you favor, with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory, and in the name of God, set up your banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him with his holy heaven and mighty victories by his right hand. Take time, take pride in chariots and home and horses, but only the pride of the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Nice beginning here. Let me blow my nose, please. Okay, I'm back. So this is a good way for us to remember that God is present in our trouble. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of trouble going on right now because with the pandemic and the economic situation, with the uh, with social injustices, um, with just so many of them just barreling down on us, we need to remind be reminded that God is with us in this time, is present to us, and is a comfort and someone that we can lean on. Okay, our next reading. comes from the gospel, gospel according to John, chapter 7, verses 53, through chapter 8, verse 11. So let's hear these words. Then each of them went home, while Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple, and all the people came to him and sat down and began and began to, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them. And they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? And they said, 
this to test him so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away. One by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the word of God for the people. God, thanks be to God. Interesting part about this one that that's it's always been in our Bible and always part of it, but it wasn't in every scroll that was found afterwards, every scroll that the scribes had, had done for a multitude of uh, centuries. Uh, it wasn't in every scroll. So it's an interesting uh, conundrum. Was this added later and why was it added? But I think that there's a lot of validity to this story. I think this is a story that Jesus would have participated in, that Jesus would have embodied this giving forgiveness out freely. It wasn't based upon her capabilities of stopping. It was based upon God's love for every child, despite the, our sinfulness, despite where we're at, and was willing to give her forgiveness if she was to repent. And I think that's important. We, we should know this. You know, this, it recalls for a repentance. He says here, go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. I mean, turn a different direction. Have a different focus on your life. And go forth and be, be new. God does something new in her by taking away her sin. She's freed from that sin that controls her life and now has a new master, and that new master is Jesus Christ. And we should always forget that freedom in Scripture is not the same kind of freedom that we try to carry around here or we talk about here in the United States and the freedom of to do any thing that we want. Well, that's, that's not kind of freedom that, that God ha considers. Freedom is to be freed from those things that chain us to death and sin, and to be free to be servants to our Lord God Jesus Christ. Let us go ahead and move on to our prayer now. As we usually do, I will lead us here and Give pause, give a moment of silence for your own personal prayer, for you to lift up your words to, to Jesus. Just go ahead and just start a conversation. And do as you do this, remember that prayer, too, is about attentiveness to God and what God is doing. So let's pray, pray this morning as if we're praying to God and being attentive to him. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. Show us your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. Fast. We pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for this day and are going into it. Bless the labor of our hands and minds so that they may add to your glory. May our every step and action be a witness to our love for you and for our neighbor.
We pray for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray for reconciliation, for hate and violence to be vanished from this land. We pray for Reliance and Reliance Chapel Charge, for the Virginia Annual Conference, for Bishop Sharma Lewis, for the Global United Methodist Church, and for all your churches that witness to your glory. We pray that all who profess and confess themselves to be Christians may be led into the ways of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit and the bond of peace and the righteousness of life. We pray for our world this time of challenge in the face of the coronavirus pandemic, for those who lead us through this crisis, for the doctors and nurses overwhelmed by the numbers, for those quarantined, for those who are suffering with the virus, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for a world this time of challenge in the face of the social unrest brought on by divisiveness, systemic racial injustices, and hatred for the other. We pray for all those who are peacemakers and for those who seek to end injustices. We pray for children, youth, and young adults growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. May they find your path. Lord Jesus, lead them away from false promises of the world. We pray for your mercy on those of our families and communities whose increasing years have brought them weakness, distress, or isolation. Help us to be their helpers and caretakers. Increase their faith and assurance of love. We also pray for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let us, as people of God, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, my friends, it's time to get started in another day. I am glad that you are here with us. I hope and pray that God is with you in everything that you're doing today. That um, no matter what, you know, what, what goes on, you're going to know that Jesus is with you. Uh, and this attentiveness, carry this attentiveness with you all the time. And uh, let's see where it takes us. Be, care be careful. Be safe. Oh, man, be safe. It, I don't know if you saw the numbers. Over 3,600 more people have died of COVID. And then now we have this new strain, which does, is not... Um, any more effective in killing as the other strain, but is more contagious. So the more people with the virus, then of course we have to expect that because of underlying symptoms in our, our bodies, that more people will also die. So we, we need to be very careful. The things have go are going to get worse. That's, that's a prediction by those who have been right so far. And I think we should listen to them. Uh, so let's be careful. Let's let's do our part. Let's be Christians. Let's care for each other. I'll take care of you. You take care of me. I'll wear my mask in public to protect you. And uh, you wear yours to protect me. And I'll wash my hands when I am coming back in to so I don't bring it in the house, if, if I have come in contact with it, I will take and try to avoid at all cause, cost areas where there's crowds and people are not wearing masks and, and to, to be protective of myself and to be protective of you. And if we all do that, we do, we end up taking care of each other, which is probably one of the most Christian things that, that we can do. Because it's those who have no faith and who only believe in themselves and uh, are all about that selfish freedom, then those are the ones that are the most dangerous to us. Well, my friends, take care. God bless you. Glad that you were here. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye now.
salvation.